Perfect. Great. I think finally we can get started. We are bang on time. Hello, everyone. Very good morning. Good afternoon. Good day to everybody uh, present across coming uh, to this webinar from across the globe. So uh, my uh, our intent is to make um, security and privacy easy. We are from Ministry of Security. So today we are going to talk about uh, ISO 42001, which is information technology artificial intelligence management system so here we are doing this world's first iso 42001 which is world's first artificial management system uh, artificial intelligence management system and today we're going to cover the implementation steps so how do we do the implementation of iso 42001 that's what we're going to cover so probably like i'm just uh, looking at the comments if you have any questions which you want to address that uh, probably you can pass it on to the comments and if there is something which we cannot cover during the session, uh, we can do it offline. We have loads to cover. ISO 42001 is a pretty big standard and pretty new standard. And this is the world's first implementation webinar also. So very less people know about ISO 42001. And we were privileged to understand and learn about ISO 42001. So let's get started. So today's speakers would be uh, myself, uh, Santosh Nandakumar. Uh, I'm a system and CIPM mentor with over 17 years of industry experience in security and privacy and now moving on to artificial intelligence also. So uh, I have a, my co-speaker, Shalini Garg. Uh, Shalini, do you want to give a quick uh, introduction about yourself? Thank you so much, Santosh. I am Shalini. I am a data privacy specialist and uh, I am also moving myself into artificial intelligence. Great. Thanks, thanks, Charlie. That was a quick introduction. Let's get started. I'm so excited uh, to get this uh, webinar. I've been waiting for a long time, and uh, this standard was launched in this uh, was published in uh, December 2023, and uh, we wanted to be the first pioneer in doing this, and we tried doing it, but unfortunately, due to some time constraints, we couldn't do it. So now we are here with the ISO 42001 webinar. Okay, so today the agenda is pretty simple. We are going to cover the quick introduction about artificial intelligence and then we are going to cover about the clauses and the controls. Controls would be taken care by Shalini. That's where the nice uh, uh, cheesy things are there. Probably like you will like to understand about what are the measures you need to take if you want to have a good quality artificial intelligence to be put in place. So uh, when we talk about ISO 42001, many, many think that it's security in artificial intelligence. No, it's about artificial intelligence management system, how to develop artificial intelligence systems in your organization, which is secure and reliable. And there are much more than security is what we're going to cover in ISO 42001. So without wasting time, uh, we're going to cover introduction. I'll be covering the introduction and clauses and Charlie would be covering the controls. So wait till uh, the entire webinar, we are going to cover a lot of things about artificial intelligence and this will definitely help if your organization is looking to forward through their developments towards artificial intelligence i think this is something which you need to look into it so introduction what is artificial intelligence artificial intelligence refer to capability of machines to imitate intelligent human behavior we know about this right so like right now many of them started using artificial intelligence way back in 2010 or 20, 2000 itself but why did it become so popular all of a sudden? The moment chat GPT started coming into picture, we saw a few artificial intelligence devices and everything, but the keyword which took everybody into the focus of artificial intelligence is predominantly, you know about it, it's chat GPT. The moment chat GPT came in and a lot of plugins came in, it made life easier and you can develop contents, you can design images, you can design videos, you can do whatever you want with just one prompt. So, and uh, the, if you become a prompt engineer also, it's one of the highest paid job. So artificial intelligence is something which has been there in the existence from a long time, but it came into picture or it uh, it started, the, the focus increased with recent times uh, with the development of many artificial intelligence tools and technologies and products which you use in your day-to-day -day life. It's, it's something which can typically perform the human uh, task using a human intelligence, though it is not exactly a human intelligence, and uh, it's more like artificial intelligence, which can mimic the human intelligence to perform certain tasks. Okay. There are different types of AI. Before I move into ISO 42001, so I wanted to talk about what are the different types of AI, okay, artificial intelligence. 
So predominantly there are narrow VKI, artificial narrow intelligence, artificial general intelligence and artificial super intelligence, but we are at phase two. Okay. So we started off with narrow or VKI, which has been there for pretty long time, like your uh, bots, which can mimic like a customer support. You feed in certain questions and answers. Suppose if somebody comes to your website and if they want to type in what is the subscription fees or what is the membership plans? So it is an auto uh, it it understands the question and provides and responds basis on the question and answers which you provide. So artificial intelligence, this type of artificial intelligence like a chatbot is like a narrow or weak AI which has been there for a very long time. Okay, then came the superhero. Uh, which is called as artificial narrow intelligence where machines are designed to perform specific tasks but they lack the ability to understand and learn beyond the task or specialized in one narrow domain so they can generate new contents depending on the uh, whatever the data feeds they get so here in the first narrow or weak ai they cannot generate content rather they can read what is there in the back end and provide you the responses but in the artificial narrow intelligence what happens is it reads the data sets, whatever you provide and can provide new uh, content basis on its understanding. For example, your chat GPT is something which can be considered as ANI. Okay. So the next is artificial general intelligence, AGI is an AI system that possesses that ability to understand, learn and apply knowledge across a wide range of tasks similar to human intelligence. This is something in the conceptual phase. It can exactly mimic human mindset. Okay, so if you ask certain questions to chat GPT, it cannot provide it will tell that I do not have that knowledge or I do not. It can never replicate the exact human intelligence or human brain. And that's where you can look at uh, artificial general intelligence, which is one step above the current chat GPT, but it's still in the conceptual phase and which can easily perform similar to human intelligence. So these are the three different types of AI, uh, which, uh, which are in existence, but there are many more types of AI, like super, super artificial, super intelligence, which is extreme beyond, which are still in the conceptual phase. These are the three types of AI. Now. So the last introductory slide about artificial intelligence, many of us and try to get confused between what is artificial intelligence, what is machine learning, what is deep learning, what is generative AI. So many of us get confused. Okay. So what to keep it simple, let's understand artificial intelligence is a wider umbrella or a wider circle where all these fit in like the machine learning, deep learning and generative AI. So artificial intelligence tries to mimic the human behavior and try to understand what the human would do in that kind of situation. And that's what it does under artificial intelligence. You find a subset called machine learning. OK, it's a subset of AI which uses advanced uh, algorithm to detect patterns in large data set, allowing machines to learn on their own without the dependency of humans. They try to learn on their own. And that's what it's machine learning basis on the data sets and the rules which you configure the machine learning would help the system to learn on its own. Next under that there is a deeper uh, subset which is called deep learning which is basis on the neural networks neural means like our brains okay the human brains work on neural network where it works on hierarchy what should go to the what how should the hand respond how should the leg respond in certain situation how should the uh, nose respond how should the blood flow in like everything is controlled by the brain neurons and basis on that only deep learning goes little more further uh, and tries to understand basis on the hierarchy the last is the subset generative ai which is the current uh, cha the chat gpt so which composes of all your deep learning machine learning and artificial intelligence and can generate new content and it it is something similar to human intelligence where what at that particular situation what would human do it's trying to do that okay gen, gen ai is nothing but generative ai which can generate new content basis on the data feeds you do so before it used to generate whatever the content you present in a structured or approach structured approach but in generative ai it can generate new content so that's a new thing which is happening right now about gen ai okay so that was a quick introduction maybe i might uh, 
rush a little if you have any doubts or concerns or clarification please drop in your comments i'm happy to address them after this session okay so that was a quick introduction about artificial intelligence and many organizations are started adopting artificial intelligence or started developing new products for their customers which can help in uh, use of artificial intelligence and with the evolvement of artificial intelligence coming into picture so iso international organization for standards came up with a new standard called ISO 42001, which is nothing but artificial intelligence management system. Like how ISO 27001 is for information security, ISO 20000 is for service management, ISO 27701 is for, for privacy management, and ISO 22301 is for business continuity management. Suppose if your organization is developing or uh, providing any kind of AI systems, you want to provide in a way which is something it can meet its objectives, and the requirements of your customers. And if you're establishing, implementing, maintaining any kind of artificial intelligence solutions, and that's where ISO 42001 can be an overarching Bible, which you can look at how to develop artificial intelligent management systems in your organization. So <clears throat> there are two parts to ISO 42001. One is the clauses, the second is the controls. Clauses is something, the scope, normative references, terms and definition, context of organization, leadership, planning, support, operation, performance, evaluation, improvement. These are your clauses. What is the difference between clauses and controls? Suppose tomorrow if your organization decides to go for an ISO 42001 certification, it's mandatory that you need to apply both clauses and controls. So controls sometimes when you're applying for a certification may need not be all controls, all the 40 controls of 42001 might be applicable to you. So controls, you can pick and choose as per your requirement, but clauses will become mandatory in case if your organization wants to pursue for ISO 42001 certification. But in case if you tell that, no, my organization wants to develop artificial intelligence management, uh, artificial intelligence systems, but we just need the best practices, you can directly refer the controls, which is Annexure A controls. And also good thing about the ISO 42001 is they provide control guidance also. Unlike ISO 27001, where there is no control guidance and you have to refer 20 27,002 for a detailed control guidance. Here for all the 40 controls of ISO 42001, they have provided a control guidance in the same standard. So just to reiterate, what did we learn? So there are two, uh, two parts to this particular standard, clauses and controls. Clauses are something which is mandatory only when you go for a certification. And it's also can, can, can be considered as a good practice, but not mandatory if you are not going for a certification. And controls are something, are the best practices, what you need to do to develop reliable and secure artificial intelligent systems. So let's talk about the boring part first, the clauses. If in case, if your organization is looking for developing uh, and getting certified for ISO 42001, I think still the certifying bodies are it to come up and launch the certification uh, aspects. But I, since the standard is already out, I'm sure that the certification bodies will come up soon uh, about how to implement uh, and get certified for ISO 42001. Let's cover about the clauses, which is more about setting up the governance and the management for your artificial intelligence management system. And next, that would be followed by controls that are the best practices needs to be implemented by an organization in case if you're looking for developing artificial intelligence systems. First thing is context of organization. If the, the structure of this particular standard is pretty much same as any other standards of ISO. They wanted to have that uniformity and alignment. So in case if you are preparing for ISO 42001, the good news is that you can you are very much familiar about the structure because it is very similar to the ISO 27001 or any other ISO standard. So first thing is when you want to start off with this particular standard, setting up the context of the organization. What do you mean by setting up the context of the organization? So before you start off with the development of your artificial intelligence management systems, you need to understand the external issues internal issues that might be relevant for your organization or that might hamper the success of your artificial intelligence success. So that's where you need to look into 
uh, the context of the organization before you do anything. First, understand about your business. What is my business all about? What does the board and the senior management are expecting from this particular implementation of artificial intelligence systems? And what are the potential factors which can impact or hinder the growth of my uh, the AI systems? So you need to understand the external issues, internal issues, and the expectations of the relevant parties or interested parties. So first step in the process is in the process of getting certified for ISO 42001 is defining the context of organization. Create a context register on the right hand side. You find which document you need to create for achieving this. It's called context register. In the context register, you can have all these address, why it is being used and what are the potential external and internal issues. You can document that in the context register. So what are the potential external and internal issues which might be part of your context register? External issues. So you know that uh, there are many regulations which are coming up even for AI. So before till date, it was only for privacy, but now with more and more people are adopting artificial intelligence. Many uh, many countries have started, have started uh, publish, publishing uh, many regulations. So you need to understand in which country you're operating and what are the regulations or legal or regulatory requirements coming into picture for fair usage of your artificial intelligence. So these are your external issues. The first external issue is your regulatory environment. Second is you need to understand the market trends, competitive market. If you do not understand, then you might end up developing a product which is no use. So you need to understand what can influence the success of your system. Are we developing a system which has already been developed by somebody else? And probably if you're doing it, then what is the use? You're no longer in the competition. You're already too late to the market. So second is market trends. And third is social and ethical considerations. So we know that artificial intelligence systems like chat GPT uh, sometimes might give biased uh, kind of answers when given a very uh, tricky prompts. So you need to understand what are the traditions, culture, norms while developing your context of organization under external issues. Next comes your internal issues. What can potentially hamper your success in this AIMS? Okay, one, the resources. Having the right set of people, process, technology for this new kind of tech, uh, new kind of uh, 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 the in initiative is something which is very niche. You need to get the right kind of resource, uh, right kind of skilled resources for your organization to develop. The second is internal process and workflow. By introducing this particular artificial intelligence, probably in, to automate certain process within your organization, it might disrupt the actual manual ways of working and you need to consider that also if something it is done manually and if you try to implement something which can be automated using artificial intelligence you need to see how the employees perceive you need to see how the processes get impact is it adding more benefits or is it adding more disadvantages you need to assess that and the data quality and the availability mostly the data quality many of you guys uh, uh, I've complained in the past that the quality, the output is not reliable. The data is something I don't believe uh, in whatever the artificial intelligence outcome uh, you get in. So that's where data quality and availability is very one of the key concern. What will be your data feed? How reliable that particular data feed? Your uh, AI systems try to uh, develop their learning basis on the data sets what you provide and if you provide an unreliable or a probably which is not so true a wrong data then it will start learning on that own and it will start keep from uh, keep providing responses basis on your unreliable data third understand your relevance to the purpose who all your stakeholders your interested parties your customers and regulators, employees, understand what is the requirement from this particular, uh, the new initiative, the artificial intelligence, and what can be the potential objectives, metrics, and risk. All these combined together will form you the context register, which can be a very good starting point for you if you're in an organization. Uh, how to get started? The first document you need to develop is context of organization, and it pretty much I've seen is in an Excel sheet. You can put it in an Excel sheet, your external issues, internal issues, relevance to purpose, and how do you intend to implement all these uh, measures to address all these issues is what you can find in the first document, context of organization. The second is scope. 
you need to draw a boundary you need to define which department or uh, is the entire organization are you going to serve to a uh, customer are you developing artificial intelligence to streamline certain processes within your organization you need to define that scope and while you're defining the scope don't forget to consider the external issues internal issues the requirements from the stakeholders all the previous slide whatever we discussed we need to remember those aspects and we need to clearly draw the boundary and we need to mention what is included and what is excluded in this particular scope so we are talking predominantly about iso 242001 artificial management implementation system uh, where uh, artificial intelligence management systems where the auditor might ask you okay show me the context register the second document what you would be interested to listen is the scope doc what is the scope which he needs to audit this gives a clear boundary for him where exactly this particular certification applies to the third is leadership definitely you need a leader like you need the governance team the senior management and the board of directors can be driving this uh, in, uh, uh, the new initiative for artificial intelligence management system so uh, you need to i identify what is their roles and responsibilities what are they supposed to do they need to provide and uh, they need to ensure that an ai policy is being developed they need to ensure that the ai policy is communicated to the entire organization they need to see how seamlessly this artificial intelligence automation or process can be integrated into the business they need to provide the right set of resources and ensure the rules and responsibilities are defined and ensure everybody are following their aspects and direct them and support uh, people when there is a requirement and ensure achievement of intended results by constant monitoring of what's happening we will talk about metrics and all little later and finally promote continual improvement so the third document which you can look at is aims manual where this particular manual will talk about the entire uh, roles and responsibilities of people who are associated with this artificial intelligence management system including the leaders the senior management and your ai manager uh, will be the spark for the entire uh, ai uh, management system implementation so leadership is pretty much required for you to document along with the roles and responsibilities and authority in your ams manual this predominantly shows uh, how the leadership is involved in the active development of reliable and secure artificial intelligence management systems the next is ai policy you need to have an ai policy that is what the high level statements coming from the senior management how do you develop and uh, develop and promote the ai policy it would talk about what is the purpose of the uh, introducing this uh, and what is the legal and regulatory requirement how people need to commit while developing ai uh, systems and how do you promote a uh, continual improvement and how do you communicate all these things will be documented in your ai policy which is something a next document which you need to keep in place again uh, we talk about uh, roles and responsibilities uh, this is pretty much not beyond the uh, and authorities okay this is not just limited to the leadership it also involves people who develop or maintain these ai system we need to de define the roles and responsibilities communicate the rules and uh, and provide the relevant training so we document all these things in your artificial intelligence management system manual the next interesting part the risk assessment okay so uh, till date we have been doing a risk assessment uh, from an information security standpoint or from privacy standpoint but now we talk about the risk assessment for from an artificial intelligence first we need to review the ai policy and objectives and to achieve that ai objective what can be the uh, what can be the show stoppers and that show stoppers is nothing but the risks which needs to be drafted uh, uh and documented using a proper risk assessment methodology document how do you intend to perform a risk assessment and the entire steps needs to be defined and how do you conduct it and you need to have a risk register handy when you want to uh, get certified so what can be the potential risk for uh, your artificial intelligence okay so risk can be bias and fairness so many times we have seen these kind of risk uh, which is something related to bias unintentional biases or the the algorithms are trained in such a way to provide unintentional uh, bias or they are not fair so you need to ensure that uh, fair and aware algorithms are being developed the second is security and privacy 
where the if the artificial intelligence management system is not considering any aspects of security and privacy then that might lead to leakage of sensitive personal information or sensitive data which is something a very potential harm to an organization transparency also called as black box like uh, nobody should challenge the outcome of your uh, the response provided by that uh, particular ai so if somebody challenges you need to be transparent enough what was the source if that is not there then it becomes very difficult for anybody to understand on what basis that this ai come to this particular outcome so that should be very clear you need to have uh, interpretable models which provide transparent explanation and other how did they arrive or what on what basis the outcome is on arrive basis of that ai systems next data quality and integrity poor data quality you are whatever the data you feed in that's what it is going to study and it provide generative content basis on the data sets whatever you provide so it's very important that the quality of the data is pretty much uh, clean and you verify so that you don't feed in any kind of sensitive or confidential data many times what we do is we copy paste certain data into the chat gpt and we try to uh, we copy paste our our own uh, uh, bank statement probably and ask it to analyze it so bank statement might have sensitive information which might lead into copy pasting something very sensitive which was not required so we need to be very clean uh, we need to ensure that the data quality or whatever we feed into that particular uh, ai is clean and verified to ensure the integrity is not mo modified so next is regulatory compliance as i said you need to comply with uh, many regulations which are coming up with the usage of ai and the last is operational risk what can potentially disrupt because of implementation of ai sometimes i have seen that by introducing ai it uh, it can potentially disrupt the actual ways and uh, people will not like it so you need to look into all these things these are the outcome high level of risk which you can consider while you are developing a risk assessment uh, and the, this is not an exhaustive or comprehensive list, but you can look at uh, these are the risks and these are the response. These are the outcome. If time permits, I have an AI, uh, um, Gen AI risk assessment sheet. After Shalini, probably I will show you how exactly you perform a risk assessment, which is one of the best uh, risk assessment which I have. So I can uh, show you if time permits, uh, probably like I can show you how the Gen AI risk assessment sheet will look like. Okay. So whatever risks you identify probably you identify certain 100 risks and you will have to do a risk assessment you need to compare that probable risk value against your risk appetite of your organization any risk which is above your risk appetite you need to put certain controls or measure probably like you do you have a you are forced to use certain production data which might contain sensitive information that's a risk and what control can you put like encryption so like this you need to ensure what are the risks and what what are the risks above your risk appetite which needs to be mitigated you plan for a uh, technical measures as part of your statement process and finally you end up having a statement of applicability in the previous one the documents which the auditor might look at is the risk assessment methodology and the risk assessment sheet and here the outcome of risk statement will help you in giving the risk statement plan and the statement of applicability both are required to be presented in a documented format to your auditor This is something really new system impact assessment, which I did not know about system impact assessment until I started reading about the standard where we usually don't do this kind of system impact assessment, which is something pretty new only as part of your ISO 42001. So you need to have an sim some, this is something very much simple and similar to your risk assessment. What we spoke about just two slides back. This is very simple and similar this can be your input to your risk assessment so what is this system impact assessment by implementing artificial intelligence or by adopting the usage of artificial intelligence there might be certain impact to your organization it can impact your people it can impact your process it can impact technology so you need to understand uh, these impacts and again this is pretty much same or similar to risk assessment but they have called out as a separate assessment which can be an input to your risk assessment so the, the the auditor would be pretty much interested to understand what is your system impact assessment procedure and how do you intend to do it and how does this feedback into your risk assessment so that's what system impact assessment talks about
So what are the outcome or output of your system impact? It talks about safety risk, it talks about privacy risk, it talks about security risk, it talks about ethical concern, social equity risk, and unintended consequences. Let's have a quick look into the all these six things. Safety risk, now many people have started using uh, artificial intelligence in autonomous vehicles. When uh, like AI enabled, you would have seen internet inside or AI enabled car. So your AI should be developed in such a way that safety of the people, which can be irreplaceable, needs to be considered. And that's what safety risk needs to be considered. So while developing this AI system, what can be the potential harm to a people? And that's what safety risk needs to be considered. Privacy risk is something you know that, right? Like if there is any compromise or sensitive personally identifiable information because of introduction of this new AI, you need to consider privacy. And security is pretty much the same thing. Ethical concerns, okay? So uh, probably like by introducing an AI, uh, let's let's assume that you are having, uh, you have adopted uh, an intelligent, artificial intelligence hiring system model, okay? So if that particular hiring uh, AI takes a biased decision basis on the historical data. Suppose if you have been rejected twice, so I would still reject you also because I see your historical data, you have been rejected. So I would reject basis on some grounds. So you need to cons consider about that. And the next is social equity risk. So uh, doing a favor to certain groups, your, uh, your AI should not do any favor. It should not provide any discrimination. Uh, you should not provide any kind of uh, inequality among multiple demographic groups. So that's where social equity risk needs to be considered. The last is unintended consequences, which we did discuss about. Probably like if it is something needs to optimize the traffic flow, but it uh, but it does not optimize, but increases the traffic flow, uh, unwanted traffic flow, that's something an uh, impact to your business. So these are the high level uh, impacts which you can consider. but. It, it's the list can be exhaustive and comprehensive basis on your organization uh, landscape. So this is something new, which will again feedback to your risk assessment. Next is AI objectives. Why you need to have AI objectives? Because without an objective, you cannot measure. Goals are something broad and the objectives are derived on your AI goals, which can be measured using metrics. And you need to define the AI objectives, which is consistent with your policy. It should be measurable and it should take all the legal and regulatory requirement. It should be monitored, communicated, updated and available as documented information. At the same time, you need to tell what are you, how do you intend to achieve this? Who will be the person who will be involved in achieving this objective? What resources does he require? When will it be completed? So you are expected to maintain a document called AI objectives register, which should completely match with this. Probably you can keep an Excel sheet, which can talk about your AI objectives, who is responsible, which department, and what are they expected to do and what resources they need to have. All these things can be documented in your AI objectives register. The next is support. Okay. So the last, uh, we are arriving to the last of the clauses uh, to support this uh, management system. You need to provide the resources and with the right set of competence. So you can document the requirements in your competency metrics. Competence metrics is nothing but what is the roles involved in your artificial intelligence management system and what is the skill set required for uh, the, what are the skills to fulfill those roles and do we have the right set of people with the same skill set and any gaps will lead to a competency gap which will feed into your training calendar so the flow is like this your competency metrics will talk about the actual roles and responsibilities and against it which you will map it against your current roles and responsibilities and then any competence gaps or skill set gaps you will identify them that as a training gap and you will feed into your training calendar. That's how competency metrics talks your training calendar. So you're expected to have an AI uh, artificial intelligence manual. At the same time, you need to document your competence metrics. The documented control procedure talks about if you have implemented ISO 27001, you can uh, look at 
you can look at the same thing you need to have version control it has to be documented you need to uh, ensure that the, any changes to the document needs to be going through a change management that's what pretty much documented information i'm not going to spend more time uh, because the interesting aspects are covered by shalini and i would like to allow shalini to talk more about it and then performance evaluation which is pretty much same as any other iso 27001 standards where you have defined the ai objectives and you need to provide metrics what all metrics can go into your artificial intelligence what was the accuracy of the outcome the precision of the data the false positive rate the data quality compliance rate so you can go on and add multiple metrics to ensure that your uh, objectives are met you can define a process around it how do you intend to evaluate the performance and then you need to define what all metrics can go for your artificial intelligence management system finally you need to have an internal audit again the same steps of iso 27001 you need to ensure that it is being audited before you go for the external audit by any certification body so when you're going for uh, the uh, when you're going for this particular uh, certification you are expected to do an internal audit and the basics of your internal audit remains same as any other standards where you need to choose auditor who has not involved in the development or implementation of this ai processes and you need to ensure internal audits are conducted on periodic basis and that's what predominantly uh, which talks about and the outcome of this internal audit process you are expected to have documented process which is internal audit plan how do you conduct internal audit uh, audits the methodology and finally the internal audit report all these three would be expected in a documented format which would be uh, required by the auditor the last is management review again pretty much similar to your iso 27001 so the auditor would be interested to see how often the management is reviewing this overall entire artificial intelligence management system so you would expect all the a b c d e to be there in your presentation what is the status and action from the previous management review what are the changes or any new additions to your external and internal issues what are the changes in needs of expectations of the interested parties how do you intend to monitor the results what are the key metrics and what was the outcome of your audits and what are the opportunities for continual improvement so the auditor would expect you to expect to see the management review records on a periodic basis ideally it should be uh, uh, on a quarterly basis the last part of the clauses which is nothing but improvement so the outcome of your audits the outcome of your risk assessment how are you continuously uh, monitoring them and correcting them that's what it talks about non conformities and you need to take corrections uh, immediately after any audits so we talk about corrections register as a documented format which the auditor would be interested to look into it so on that note i end the clauses and i think we still have uh, uh 25 minutes i hope shalini you will be able to cover the 40 plus controls and uh, if time permits and if everybody are okay i want to show how does a gen ai risk assessment would look like i i have very comprehensive uh, sheet which i can show it to you now i think uh, we are over and about 30 minutes uh over to you shalini uh can you take Thank over you. this control Thank you so much, Santosh, for this insightful session. And I think, and I can read it in comments that everyone is waiting for that sample Gen AI checklist which you are going to share. So oh yes, uh, we have to, you know, spare some time from the session so that we can share what actually people need. So here, yes. actually, I am starting with the controls. So basically, ISO this ISO control is basically about the controls and the implementation guidelines. wherein it says that the implementation guideline is just the guideline you do not have to you know follow as is but you can just you know take some uh, references from these kind of implementation guideline it can just guide you other otherwise you as a professional have to follow the controls which is being provided in this iso so let's start with the first control which is policies related to the ai so any time when we are incorporating any type of control in our organization we have to follow some policies right so we have to provide to our organization the guidance and support related to the business requirement so that's why we prepare a proper documentation of step by step things to be done so that we can achieve the system ai system life cycle so in that particular thing policy related to ai we have uh, three points wherein ai policy is being defined so uh, let's set tone for our ai policy by getting deep into the business strategy its values and how much is the risk that we are comfortable with 
Legal requirements and the risk percentage in our organization also will have a very great impact over assessing the risk of the organization. So we have to dig into how AI impacts our stakeholders. The policy is the guiding principles, a roadmap, for example, a roadmap kind of thing for when things don't quite fit into the plan, then we have to deep dive into the specific things like how we handle the AI resources, the impact assessments, the developments, etc. It's all about making sure that our AI policy is seamlessly connected with other important rules that we follow. Uh, so AI policy basically include two things in this ISO, which is principles that guide all the activities of the organization related to AI. And the another one is the processes for handling deviations or exceptions to the policy, which we have already made. Now, the other point is alignment with other organizational policy. So you must be aware that your organization must be following other type of policies. You are having different, different policies in your organization. So let's think about how AI fits into this big picture. We are, we are talking about connecting the dots with other policies related to the quality, security, safety, and privacy for that matter. So it's like a puzzle to find out where does this impact, where does this AI impact those policies? So we as an organization have to deep dive and figure out if any policy need a refresh or add new bits to our AI policy to make sure that everything aligns smoothly. And it's about making sure that our objectives with the AI are attached seamlessly with the existing policies. Now, the other one is that we have to review the AI policy, which we have made. So we shall keep an eye on our AI policy. It's like giving a regular checkup kind of thing that makes sure that it's doing its job well. The organization shall also have someone appointed as an in charge for these kind of regular checkups so that regular checkups can happen. Right. So it's it's so and uh, this in charge. It should be approved by the management. Not any person can be the in charge for these kind of uh, policies. So to look into how our policy is doing and if there is any room for any improvement, they will figure that out. So actually, it's about staying on that top of the things and adjusting our policy to keep up with any changes in the world that is happening, whether it's our business, the law or the technological landscape. Plus, we also learn from the overall management reviews to make our policies even better. So this was about AI policy. Now the another control is internal organization control. In this, we as an organization have to make sure that everyone in the organization takes the responsibility for implementing, operating and managing the AI system in a responsible way. In this internal organization, we have few controls wherein we talk about AI roles and responsibilities. So in the AI game, we need a clear role and responsibility. It should be crystal clear. The, uh, this is actually the key for keeping everyone in the organization to be accountable for their role. So as we nav navigate to this AI system life cycle, we have to make people accountable for their responsibility. Only then we can achieve a proper control of the standards. So when handling our responsibilities related to the organization, we should also think about AI policies, AI objectives or any other risk that is out there. So you can play your favorite here, for example, uh, risk management or AI impact assessment or security, etc. And we have to provide a proper vigilance to these departments. Other than that, each role should come with a detailed job description of every department. So everyone knows the game plan. Basically, think of it as a playbook. So making sure everyone's got the right move in the AI journey. So another thing is that reporting of concern. Now you have your AI policy. You have people there for uh, accountability thing. Now whom to report, who to report. These questions basically arise in our mind, right? So in this AI journey, it is very crucial to have an important open channel for all the concerns related to AI. So the organization needs to report, uh, needs to have a reporting process 
you know, reporting process that covers all the departments. This mechanism should allow people to speak up confidentially and even anonymously. In our uh, privacy thing or AI thing, we have to, you know, report our concerns confidentially or anonymously so that no one can get caught. So it's not just for the employees. Even contractors also feel the same encouragement that, yes, they are being secure and their, uh, their voice has been heard. Uh, other than that, we need a team of professionals who are handling this, who are qualified individuals and who can dig into these kind of concerns and resolve them properly. Plus, it should also have a direct contact with the management, which ensures a timely response. Most importantly, there should be a rock solid protection for all of those reporting and investing and keeping things confidential and anonymous and respecting the business confidentiality in that case. So basically, it's uh, it's about creating a safe space for everyone in this AI adventure. We are actually moving towards this AI adventure. You all will you all will agree with me, right? Uh, the next control is the resources for the AI system. Now we are about to uh, implement the AI system in our organization. So what are the resources which we require? And what are the standards which we have to comply uh, while, uh, you know, just uh, hiring the resources or just implementing the resources in these AI system. So the organization needs to check out all of these stuff which are present in the AI system. Example, it's parts, it's assets, etc. To really understand that what risk and impact that might come up in future. We also have to make sure that our organization is secure in future by any kind of risk or threats which may occur in the future. So what we have to do is we have to do a resource documentation. OK, this is a term which has been introduced. So let's just simplify this. The organization needs to list down the important stuff for its AI system, its journey and other related activities. We just have to note it down. So organization uh, has to keep the tab on these resources, for example, parts, data, tools or other people involved in the AI system. It's a very big deal to keep all of the records. Uh, trust me. So it's not just about understanding the risk, but also figuring out how the AI system can impact individual and societies as a whole and whether it's a positive impact or it's a negative impact in a whole. So we just have to understand these things. So these details put down on a paper or maybe shown through the diagrams plays a very important or a key role in those AI system impact assessments. And remember that these resources can come from the organization, customer or even the people who are involved in the process. So we just have to keep them all documented. This is all, you know, we have to take care of. Now, uh, we are uh, taking care of the resources and everything, the documentation. Now it comes about data resources. Okay. So when we talk about resources, especially the data, which is being used in the AI system, the organization needs to note down some key information. This includes where the data has been come from, when it was last updated, or what type of data it is, like whether it's for training, it's for testing, or for the real deal. So they need to note down how the data is labeled or maybe it's indented use, like why the data is being used. What is the intention behind the collection of this data? So and what is the quality of the data or if the data will be having any issues in the future? We just have to keep that in mind and we just have to document all of these things. Plus, there should be a plan for keeping or getting rid of the data as when and as and when required. So basically, when you think and when you know that this data might have some issues in the future, might create some risk, you just have to get rid of that data as soon as possible for your organization. This is also one of the very important responsibility for you as a security or AI manager for your company. The another standard is tooling resources. So when the organization is basically figuring out what it needs for the AI system, it's important to note down details about the tools which is being used in the organization. These tools, especially in the world of machine learning, can be a different type of algorithm or a different type of models, tools to prep the data or ways to make the things run in a better way. For example, optimization method or uh, methods to check how well everything is going. For example, we can take evaluation methods for that matter, right? So tools that make sure resources are available 
when needed and other bits and bobs that help with developing and deploying the AI system, for example, software and hardware. So this kind of documentation helps the thing being very crystal clear and helps in understanding that what tool is doing what actually. And throughout the AI system's journey, we just have to make sure that every tool is performing their uh, function properly. And we just have to know that what tool is doing what kind of activity. Now the another uh, control is system computing and uh, computing resources. So uh, when the organization is figuring out its resources, we just have uh, we just talk about it, and it basically it needs to write down about the AI systems technical stuff. So this includes what system actually needs to run smoothly. Where is it set up? For example, on premises, is it set up on the cloud or is it set up on the edge computing? The processing gear, for example, network or storage and how the hardware is being used and how the hardware is being used, which affects the AI system and the environment. In all of these things, we just have to keep in mind different stages like creating, launching and running the system, which might need a different technology stuff to keep the AI system things getting better and better day by day. Now, uh, in this uh, in this particular thing, we just have the last uh, uh, standard, which is human resources. So the organization needs to make sure that it has the mix of skills. And while bringing in various roles required for the system, think about including specific groups in the data sets if it is very crucial for you. So we require essential people for the job. Well, you have got your data scientists for this thing and those keeping eye on an AI system. Experts in the safety, security, and privacy fields are also very important. Uh, and AI researchers, specialists, or other domain experts are also very important. Just remember different stages of the AI system's journey might need different individuals for the different, different skills. Now we are moving on to the control number five, which is assessing impacts of the AI system. Now we are done with resources, we are done with policies, we have to assess the impact of the AI system, which we have just incorporated in our organization. So uh, we just have to let uh, dig into this AI system and see how it actually shapes up for individual, for group of individual or for societies throughout their life cycle. So for that thing, we have to AI system impact assessment process. Santosh has very well explained this thing. What is system impact assessment? Uh, so I will just tell you about the control. When dealing with the AI system, the organization must assess how they impact individual and societies. They have to assess this because it is very important thing. This involves considering legal implications, life opportunities, well-being, human rights or other societal effects. The organization's plan should outline when and how to conduct this assessment. An organization shall cover factors like systems, purpose, complexity, or data sensitivity, which is being involved in this thing. So the assessment includes identifying, analyzing, evaluating, and taking necessary action for this system impact assessment process. Now in this AI system impact assessment, which considers various aspects of AI system, including data, technology, and overall functionality with procedures tailored into the organization's role and AI application domains such as security, privacy, or safety. This is all about AI system impact assessment process. Now we are moving on to, uh, we have to document uh, this AI system impact assessment. Okay. So uh, what is the control regarding that? All right. Let's make it more casual for this documentation thing. Have some documentation uh, can uh, really help you to figure out what information is required or to go out to the users and other people who are interested in the AI system gig. Now, it is very crucial to keep track of all the AI system impact assessment. We have to give them updated as and when needed. And in this whole process, we shall follow the AI system impact assessment checklist. OK, so now the question arises, how long uh, that we have to keep them around or uh, for this, we have to follow organizational schedules or any legal rules that there that is there for the organization. Now, the question arises, what to jot down, what to write down, as I am saying that you have to document, we have to document what what you have to document. So think about the AI systems use and possible misuses that it can have the good and bad impacts on people and societies 
what it can go wrong or how to fix it you have to document all of these things so and don't forget who this system is for and how tricky it is uh, and the human touch involved so basically while i was reading this is uh, this standard they are not missing this human touch which shall be there even though we are implementing ai in our organization so like people overseeing things and making sure that everything is running smoothly it is very important for a human uh, for human to check everything if it is uh, doing good or not and let's not miss on to the skills of the staff and the job which they do it's all the part of the documentation game only now we are uh, moving towards uh, the next uh, next standard which is uh, ai system life cycle which is asa 6.1 now management guidance for the ai system development which we are talking about we as an organization has to make sure that organization set goals define them and puts in a place properly documented procedures for creating ai system now what are the objectives for this responsible development of ai system the organization needs to figure out and write down its goals for making ai system in a responsible way then it should keep these goals in mind and include steps to reach them as they build the ai system for their company the organization needs to set clear goal that will impact how they design and develop the ai system these goals are not just for so show they should be a part of every step in the process so let's say uh, one of the goal is to be fair okay so this fairness goal needs to be in the plan from the start from listing what's needed to gathering and pampering the data and to prepare the data and uh, training the model and every and everything is important so even checking if it is doing the right thing or not and after all of these things we have to monitor is uh, monitor it continuously so continuous monitoring is also very important to make sure these goals are met every step and the organization has to give clear instructions and advice it's like saying hey use this testing tool or method to make sure that ai is fair and doesn't show any biases so it's all about uh, making sure that ai turns out the way we want it by including our important goal right from the beginning right uh, so now the next uh, thing is processes for responsible ai system design and development let's make it a little conversational when it comes to responsibly developing ai system we have got to think about a bunch of things like the different stages in the system's life uh, you can use the standard model or you can make it on it's up to you and what and how we are testing whether humans need to keep an eye on the things especially if the ai system can affect people and we should also decide when to check how the ai system is affecting things and what kind of data that we are using and who is giving us the green light for it so the individuals working on the system needs to know their stuff like the subject matter or whatever they are training for and before we release anything anything for that subject matter there are certain criteria and approvals that we require to met okay we we have to meet these requirements now uh, it uh, the standard talks about ai system life cycle and ai system life cycle defines the criteria and requirement for each stage uh, of the ai system life cycle simple one liner thing they have uh, just you know uh, said about the control but they have uh, provided us certain implementation guideline for this control so this is like ai system requirement and specification let's talk about getting things right from the start when it comes to ai system the organization needs to lay down and write down the rules for the new ai system and or any big chances to the existing one so for example if the exist if there is any changes in the existing ai system we have which we, we also have to write it down and we have to make record of it that yes we are changing the system so the organization has to ask these questions to themselves like why are we making this ai system is it because uh, it makes a, uh, a a good sense for business or a, a customer asked for it or maybe there is a government policy which is pushing it so we have got to be very clear on how uh, we are teaching our ai and what kind of data it needs so these rules and requirements cover the whole life of the ai system from the first idea to when it's up and running and you know what we might need to go back and check these rules if things aren't going as planned or if new information pops up 
then make our AI system even better. For example, if it turns out to be too expensive to build an AI system, we might need to rethink about the things. So it's about being clear on why we are making the AI system and setting the rules straight and being ready to tweak them if needed. The another uh, standard which talks about is documentation of the AI system uh, design and development. So we have to document it. We, I am telling you from the starting of this session that we have to document it. It is the most important thing. So uh, let's cover it in a nutshell. Uh, when the organization sets out to create an AI system, they kick things off by noting down a plan based on what they want and the requirements of it. So designing this AI system involves some crucial decisions like picking up the learning approach uh, which Santosh has already explained, or algorithm, and figuring out how to train the model with the quality data. We have, we have to train it, right? We have to train it with the quality data so that we can extract good results out of it. So then we have to evaluate and refine models, choose a proper hardware, and, uh, and we have to be vigilant about the security threats as well. And uh, this is uh, this is not the one and done process. Like it is not like once you have implemented this and it's done. No, it's not like that. There's a bit of dance between the designing and developing this uh, whole system. But here's the key. They need to keep a detailed notes. Like you have to document. In the end, they should have a solid blueprint for the entire AI system, a roadmap for the high tech masterpiece. It is very important. So, so everything which you are doing, you just have to document it. Now, another thing is AI system verification and validation. Absolutely. When making sure our AI system is on point, we have got a plan. We use tests and tools to check everything set criteria for release and then evaluate the system. This includes looking for the potential risk to people and society, ensuring reliability, ensuring safety, and uh, you know, doing the responsible use of these things. So we also consider data quality, usage plans, and special cases in that matter. Regular evaluation is very important and regular evaluation we have to do. And if the AI system falls short, especially on being responsible, then we reassess. And it's about keeping the things in check, adjusting if needed and making sure that our AI system is doing what it should for people and society. It is very important that they, they have included these things, society, in this uh, particular standard. Now, the another standard is AI system development. When it comes to AI system, then uh, they can start in one place and end up somewhere else. Like it's being created in-house and then sent to the cloud. It's like that. So in that case, the organization needs to think about these differences when planning the rollout and consider if different parts like the software and model can be deployed separately. Before launching the artificial intelligence, there is a checklist called release criteria. This includes passing the test, meeting performance goal, finishing user testing and getting the green light from the management. So it is very important while we are deploying the AI system in our organization. Now uh, we talk about AI system operation and monitoring. So monitoring and maintaining the AI system involves several key considerations. First is we need to keep a close eye on the system's performance and checking for errors, if any errors are there and ensuring that it aligns with our goals, with the goals of the organization that we had talked about and uh, the real world data also. For the AI system that continuously learn, we must monitor and ensure that they should stay on track. We have to make sure that our AI system is staying on track. Even non-continuous learning system may experience shift in performance due to change in production, due to change in data, or uh, and basically even the non-continuous learning system uh, AI system also require this uh, continuous vigilant monitoring and potential retraining. So we have to provide uh, training to these systems. Additionally, we should also have uh, a robust process for responding to these errors and failures and updates which are necessary for the system. Now, uh, whether it is external or internal, we have to support, uh, we, have, we should have the support for the system, which requires well-defined process for the user contact, issue reporting, and adherence to the service level agreements. 
lastly it is very important to consider the address uh, security threats and uh, we have to address these security threats and uh, which are very unique to the ai system and the data poisoning or model related attacks it can do in summary effective ai system operation involves continuous monitoring responsive repairs thoughtful updates and robust user support now we are uh, moving on to uh, the different uh, the next standard which is uh, which is ai system verification and validation so we have got a plan we use test and tools to check everything set criteria for the release oh, and evaluate the system. just a quick i'm sorry sorry to interrupt you just a quick uh, check are we talking about a.7 data for ai systems uh one second yes yes so we are talking about uh, a.7 this is data for the ai system perfect perfect yeah we are on that slide only right yeah okay yeah so, organization... also quick time check uh, shalini yeah. like uh, we are 5 minutes past the scheduled time so just uh, if you can uh, uh, little yeah i, I am just trying to open real quick santosh no problem all right all right so now the next standard is the data for the ai system which is organization shall understand its role impact for their data and uh, in the ai system and use the ai system throughout their life cycle now it is uh, so basically due to the constraint of time i am uh, moving uh, moving a real quick so i just have to understand make you understand the guidance which says about the control okay so about the data for development and enhancement of ai system Uh, we have to talk about handling data and it's uh, not about saving files we need to be very careful about the privacy and security because some data is personal and when we make ai system uh, uh, that uses data we also have to watch out for our safety issues as well so being clear about uh, how we should use the data is very important and think of it like explaining where our information comes from and how it affects what are the ai system does and what is the thing that ai system does this this is super important when we want the system to be open and understandable we also need to make sure that the data we use to teach our ai is good match for the situation it is actually facing and of course the data itself needs to be very accurate and trustworthy in that matter in simple terms managing data is a big deal it's about careful and smart so that ai system will work uh, well and are responsible now we will talk about accusation of data so when it comes to getting the right information uh, for our ai system we have to think about different things for example firstly we need to know that what type of data our ai system requires how much data we are we are talking about and where we are getting this data from it could be from the inside organization bought it from uh, somewhere else shared by others or even open data that's freely available in the market so also we should understand the nature of the data source is it static is it constantly flowing is it collected generated by machine etc so we just have to make sure about these things then we have to look at the people or things the data is about so where is the detail uh, for example we have to make sure that what are the details which are there and uh, is there any biases or any errors regarding this data now we are talking about the quality of the data for the ai system good data is super important for ai system to give accurate results there is a rule book called iso iec 25024 that says data quality is about how well data meets the need of a certain conditions especially for ai system that learn from data like in supervised or semi supervised machine learning environment we need to make sure that the training testing and real use of data are great we also have to check and improve the quality to make sure that they are perfect for what that we do also we keep we have to keep an eye out for the uh, for the bias in the data and make changes to the model accordingly now we'll talk about data provenance so uh, imagine you have a set of rule iso 8002 uh, that talks about where your data comes from this includes uh, details like when it was created when it was updated or even if it was transferred or transformed in the whole life cycle of the data now this record or the data provenance for that matter is like a story of your data privacy journey and it tells you if the data was changed or moved around and here is the cool part even sharing data without giving full control and any changes made to it count to the story okay so uh, but here's a trick depending on where the data comes from what's in it how it is used 
organization need to think if they should check the story or the provenance of the data it's like making sure uh, you know the history of the data and to trust it more okay now we are moving on to next which is data preparation let's talk about getting data ready for the ai system it's like getting it all dressed for the special job okay so you see ai system working better with the data that's in a certain way imagine if your data is missing stuff has mistakes and it's all over the place in terms of how big or small the numbers are you know that can mess things up right so we have to use tricks to make the data looks good and behave well we might check its statistics and keep clean up the mistakes fill the missing bits and make sure that everything is in the standard form it's like putting your data through a makeover now the next thing is uh, now move, we are moving on to the next standard which is uh, information for interested parties of the ai system now relevant parties shall have the necessary information to understand and assess the risk okay we have to uh, we have to have the data at least to understand and assess the risk so the impact can be positive impact or the negative impact whatsoever but the data is very important in that thing uh, the system documentation and information for user says that information about the ai system include technical details and instructions general notification to the users and they are interacting with the ai system ai systems are very complex it is very important that users are able to understand when they are interacting with the ai system how the system works and what is the purpose for this uh, this uh, this thing and what are the intended uses for this ai system and how much ai can cause harm or how it is beneficial to the organization this we all have to know there is a lot of information that can be provided to users for example we can provide the purpose of the system how to interact example uh, that i have already discussed with you now we are moving on to external reporting as we keep a vigilant eye on the system for any reported issue whatsoever for any failure let's also ensure an open channel for it users and external parties should feel empowered to report any adverse impact be it concerns about fairness or any other matter this actually fosters a very collaborative and responsive environment within the organization now uh, communication of incident says that when it comes to incident with our ai system they could range from system specific issues to concerns about information security or privacy like a potential data breach it is very crucial that our organization recognizes its responsibilities in notifying users and stakeholders tailoring our approach based on the unique context of the system now we are uh, moving on to the next which is information for interested parties so in certain situations uh, what happen is jurisdiction may require us to open up about our system sharing crucial information with the authorities and those who have vested interest like interested in in the in the particular thing like regulators or customers so we have to tell the information this entails delivering technical documentation ranging from data sets for training and validation to the reasoning behind algorithm uh, choices or along with the records and verification and validation furthermore we also need to disclose the risk associated with our system uh, like present in the result of the impact assessment and provide which provide various system records including logics so it's not just about ticking all the check boxes it's about ensuring the transparency and accountability at the same point of time now we are moving on to the second last standard which is the use of ai system the ai system can be used responsibly in the terms of uh, in the terms and policies of the organization so here we are discussing about the processes for the responsible use of the ai system there can be a very uh, you know numerous ways for use an ai system the organization uh, has to decide on whether the system shall be developed in house or we have to outsource it from a third party the organization shall also develop policies and uh, which will address these kind of decisions the policies which we have we have made already in the first standard so policies will include approvals like from whom we require approval what is the cost which will be involving is there any outsourcing requirements or any legal requirements we also have to consider the legal requirements in these cases now we are moving on to the next thing which is objectives for the responsible use of ai system 
the organization shall have the clear picture in their mind regarding different expectations and objectives for implementing a responsible ai system the organization shall identify and document objective for example uh, what is the objective of the organization do they want to establish fairness in the organization uh, do they want everyone to be accountable transparent explainable reliable safe uh, do they want safety or uh, redundancy do they want privacy and security and once these objectives are well defined in the organization then we should implement mechanism to achieve those objectives in that case organization also have to decide if a third party solution fulfills the organization objective or if the internally developed solution can be uh, suitable for this purpose all right now uh, next we are moving on to intended use of these ai system what is the use of this ai system so we as an organization shall use the ai system as it should be used by the organization and uh, we should follow the intention of use right so for the all uh, of the usage shall be documented properly you have to document it as well organization has to see that ai system performance is accurate and the organization should retain event logs or documentation for the ai system uh, deployment to demonstrate intended use for the addressing concerns and the retention period depends upon the ai system's purpose or the organization data policies it basically depends upon the policy of the organization or any other legal requirement uh, if if there is any for the data retention now we are moving on to the last uh, uh, standard which is third party and customer relationship so basically this standard builds accountability and responsibility within the organization so when the third parties are involved at any stage of uh, ai system life cycle this control makes sure that the risk is being apportioned properly which is distributed properly basically now uh, what is allocating responsibilities in that matter so we as an organization shall ensure that responsibilities within the ai system life cycle are allocated between the organization between partners between suppliers customers and third parties so these responsibilities can be splitted between the parties providing data and parties providing algorithms or models and uh, parties who are developing the ai system Uh, they all are accountable with regard to uh, some or the interested parties for the organization so uh, when processed data includes personally identifiable information so responsibilities are usually uh, is, uh, you know distributed between pii processor or pii controller so like that it's just an example now uh, what is the supplier says in that case supplier can be used in number of ways in organization like sourcing data sets machine learning algorithm or models or other components of the system so a proper process shall be established to ensure whatever materials products or service provided by the supplier should align with the organization's approach we have to follow the policy in every standard in every control now the last thing is customer the organization should understand the customers expectations and the needs when it is supplying the product or service related to an ai system so one organization can have very uh, you know different vast uh, type of customer relationship that can uh, have different needs and different expectations for example the organization can identify risk related to the use of ai products and services by the customer and can decide to treat the identified uh, identified risk by giving appropriate information to its customer so uh, that the customer can you know treat the corresponding risk so uh, it's all about the standards which uh, which we have introduced uh, so over to you santosh sorry i ex exceeded the time uh, <laughs> but yeah completely uh, fine shalini so uh, i i couldn't get much time to learn about controls uh, because i was busy preparing for clauses but that was a very very insightful session and i believe that uh even our uh, followers would acknowledge saying that uh, we learned something new what all are the controls which we need to consider so uh, that was really great and uh, now uh, thank you uh, thank you everyone but before that wait uh, do not quit uh, as promised i think i can take five more minutes time and quickly show you how does this gen ai risk assessment sheet will look like okay that is pretty much the mother of all documents in the entire iso 42001 how does it look like what are the key things which you need to consider i am going to show that so i'm going to take up questions uh, uh, probably after uh, this session i'll respond me and shalini will respond to each one of your queries whatever you have been posting please post your questions 
in case if you find uh, something which we did not cover with the limited time we tried doing our level best to cover the most of the standard at least these uh, standards are required for you to explain for 8 to 10 hours but i believe with very short time we were able to do justice but on that note uh, uh, we will move on to show you how does this gen ai uh, risk assessment uh, and system impact assessment would look like just give me a second Okay, I'm going to present the Let me know if you're able to see my screen, Shalini. Yes, Satosh. It's visible. Great. So this is how a Gen AI risk assessment sheet will look like. So you're, when you're developing any kind of an uh, uh, AI applications, so you need to do this kind of risk assessment, uh, which this one will also have data protection impact assessment. So we talk about both uh, the GenAI risk assessment and DPIA included in this particular sheet. So first we give the co company name and what is this application all about? And we provide the details about this, why it is used, the description. So why, uh, what are the interests and what are the techniques? So you can put all these things. So this would be one stop shop for you to explain anybody that why is that AI application is being used and what stage and when will that be. This is more like the first section, the description of application is predominantly like a project charter, which you can consider. Okay. Next is the necessity and proportionality. Like why, why do you want to have this and how do you ensure the data is being collected? And that's about step two. Step three is more about technical and organizational measures, like what all measures uh, do you have existing like for example we, we will have some contracts with the third party vendors and we will have all opt opt out form for abuse monitoring and human review like we will list down all the measures whichever we have probably like you might not have currently uh you can look at proposed planned in work in place not planned unclear so first you need to list down all the technical and organizational measures which can potentially uh, reduce the risk to the organization from safety, security, and privacy when you're developing in that. So you need to uh, document very clearly what is that measure and what is the purpose and what is the current state. It's okay even if it is not in place, but at least this helps you in understanding what are the controls which you have planned or in progress and how do you intend to implement or how you have implemented and who will do it and when will it be done. And then uh, the, uh, we talk about going down the risk, the risk assessment. So here is what the entire risk assessment, the Gen AI risk assessment will look like. So uh, we, we have certain flavors like ethics, data privacy, general, and there might be certain security. So this is not a comprehensive one, but at least we have tried to cover many of the Gen AI risk. And if that particular risk materializes, what can be the potential uh, issues and uh, like uh, which can be potential impact? What are the potential impact like financial impact, reputational impact, regulatory impact, criminal impact? And we we'll document the probability and the impact. And then we see what all uh, AI risk can be there. Like our uh, AI, our use of AI results in unintended refusal of services to the people. Is this probable risk which you have already considered? If yes, how do you intend to do it? What are the technical measures? And next comes about risk related to IP secrecy and we cover all those things. How do you intend to do it? This model's original training is inference data protection. Probably we are talking about the training uh, of that particular model. How do we train? What are the data sources? And how do we consider the risk arising from that? And we are talking about the risk related to input we use for our generation. That's continuation of the inputs what we uh, feed in. Like, are we feeding any personally identifiable information? Are we feeding wrong data? Are we feeding in some financial records? Uh, uh, like, uh, we don't uh, uh, input something and copyright infringement, infringement document. If you're doing that, what will be the impact? How do you address it? So we talk about the risk related to the input of the data. 
then moving on the output generated so we need to as i said at the beginning it, the output of your ai risk assess, uh, the output of your ai application should not give you any kind of biased decisions so we need to wor worry about when you're doing your risk assessment you need to complete the entire life cycle of the ai including the input how does it process how does it how, what will be the output so you need to consider all the risk at the all stages of the life cycle of this ai application we spoke about the input now we are talking about the output so is this particular ai application is going to be biased uh if, will it be providing any kind of bias results and uh, does it provide in in uh, incomplete data or inaccurate data or is it pro gonna provide suppose if you go to chat gpt and try to ask can you suggest few pirated websites it will tell no as a artificial intelligence model i would not recommend those things so these are the key things which the model should understand what are the sensitive questions and what it should avoid doing it so we we uh, we need to consider all these risks uh, while you're developing your ai system and we talk about other risk related to the overall solution so this is something which talks about the overall uh, solution what can be the general risk so we receive a de deletion request that we are not able to properly comply with somebody tries to input a data and he, he finds that his personally identifiable information is showed in that particular artificial intelligence application which is accessed by everybody so you might have used my uh, hr data or onboarding of a letter and fed that particular data into your uh, ai uh, system and now my personal details everything is been accessed by everybody now i need to do an access deletion so we need to talk about uh, that particular aspect this is pretty much about the individual rights uh, covering the privacy uh, of the data subjects like how the data access would be requested what if i am a data subject and if i am that's where i tell the regulations are coming up in every country like the usage of ai and what what are the requests from the data subject which you need to consider so we talk about all these things and uh, that's something uh, where you end up getting the uh, uh, the level of risk which are above uh, high medium low and finally you can look at the conclusion and also there is a compliance check so as i told uh, you need to look at the uh, the list of regulations which are applicable for your organizations and uh, this, this is something like you can look at a uh, uh, like you can try to understand what type of data is being fed and for that particular data is there any possible supporting regulation which you need to which you mandatorily need to comply with like for example do you involve third party secrets do you involve own secrets do you involve personal data do you involve any own ip do you involve any credit card data so you need to ensure that the 